Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer.com. Today on our 2019 Chevrolet Silverado 3500, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install the Weston HTX Nerf Bars with 4-inch drop steps. This is what the Weston Nerf Bars are going to look like installed. Now keep in mind, these do come in different lengths, so be sure to check our fit guide. Not only are these going to give us a few functional benefits, they're also going to enhance our appearance. They're going to give us a little more rugged look. Now originally Nerf bars were designed just to protect the underside of our truck, but things have changed and come a long way since then. Now they're primarily going to be used to help us get in and out of the truck, enhance our appearance while still helping protect our undercarriage. With our Nerf bars on, like I said, it's going to be a lot easier to safely get in and out of our pickup. Now what I really like about these Nerf bars is that they're going to give us the best of both worlds. The pad to step on is going to be wide and spacious, as opposed to some of the other ones that I've seen on the market that look really good, but there's not a whole lot of room to put your foot. So as you can see here, even with big work boots on, I have more than enough room to get my foot on and off. What I really like about these is that the foot pad is actually going to extend out past our truck. So this will be especially useful when we're getting out. You don't have to search for it like some of the other ones. You can just put your foot right down on it. As I said, some of the other ones on the market actually sit further back underneath the truck and so it can be kind of difficult to find it. Not with these. Simply step right out and we're good to go. These are really going to help put your mind at ease, especially if you got kids hopping in and out of the back all the time. Now all the friends that you're going to pick up are going to have a nice easy time getting in and out of your truck. So if you're tired of stretching way up in your truck to get in and out, these are going to be a good option for you. Now these are a pretty straightforward and easy install. So if you're that type of do-it-yourselfer, you probably wouldn't need to take it to a shop to get them installed. If you're shooting more for the appearance aspect of the Nerf bars, a nice touch to match them would be a grill guard. You can find those on eTrailer.com. Many of our customers have personally reached out to us and said that they really like the clean look of these and that they get compliments on them all the time. Now one thing I personally like is how they added this extra step here towards the back of the truck. That's going to be nice because we can get on and off of it to help us gain access to the inside of our bed. To begin our installation, I went ahead and laid out all of our brackets and hardware that we're going to use to secure the running board. Now I'll go ahead and walk you through one by one on what bracket and hardware we're going to use for each mounting point. The first one we're going to start with is on the driver's side front. The bracket that we're going to be using is lettered A and how this is going to sit is actually inside of the frame rail. It's going to sit flush against. There's going to be a well nut in the frame right there. So our bracket is going to sit on this pinch weld. We're going to put a bolt through to connect to that well nut as well as we'll set up some hardware to connect to this opening right there. What we're going to do before we put our bracket up is take a nut clip and actually clip it onto the pinch weld and line it up with this hole. Now once that's in there, we can go ahead and loosely mount our bracket. Now what we're going to use for both of these holes is a bolt, a split lock washer, and finally a flat washer. Okay, put that up in there. And like I said, just get them hand tight. All right, our next mounting location is going to be one hole back from our original bracket. So our original hole and the next one back is the one we're going to use now. Once again, there's going to be a weld nut in the frame. And we're going to use a U-nut clip once again, except this time we're going to put it on with the longer end facing up towards the floor of the truck, like this. 
we're going to be using bracket DC. We're also going to use the same hardware to secure our bracket that we used with the first bracket. I'm set it up. Now our next mounting location is going to be three holes back from the bracket that we just did. So we're actually going to be using the third hole. And right above it, there's going to be a rubber plug. We're going to have to pop that out. You can just take a flathead and pry underneath it. Well, this one's going to be a little bit different. What we're going to do is take a U-nut clip and push it in through this large hole. That way our threads will line up with the smaller hole in front of it. So we'll take it like this. And just push it in. Now we're gonna take another U-nut clip and put it over our hole, just like the one we did before. Now with all that in place, we can put our bracket up. Now the bracket that we're going to be using is bracket B. Once again, the same hardware from the other brackets is what we're going to use to secure this one. For the very last bracket, we're going to have to do a little pre-assembly. The bracket that we're going to have to do that to is D14. What we're going to do is set it like this, and then take one of the bushings that comes included. These just pull apart. And what we're going to do is feed that into one of these holes. We'll start with this one. You push it in like that. And you take the other half and put that on. We're going to do the same thing to this opening. Now, what we're going to do is use these large washers and these two long bolts. We'll take the bolt and put it through the washer, run it through the bushing. Now we're actually going to connect this whole setup to this bracket, which is D12. So we'll lay this flat and just loosely thread our bolts into it. You just want to get them hand tight. That way we have a little bit of wiggle room when we go to install. Now to secure our most rearward bracket, we're actually going to use some factory hardware. Now I am right at the front of the bed. The hardware that we're going to use is right here in front of our fuel tank filler hose. There's going to be one bolt, that's going to be a 13 millimeter, and another one which is going to be an 18 millimeter. We're going to go ahead and remove those. Now we can take our bracket and put it in the place of where we just removed our hardware and re-secure it with those bolts that we just took out. Now you don't want to crank these down, you just want to get them hand tight for now. This is what our brackets are going to look like loosely installed. Now we're at the point where we can attach our running board to the brackets. Now I'd like to point out how we're going to do that. Along our running board, we're going to have threaded holes just like that. And that's what we're going to use to attach our running board to the bracket. Now all these are going to use the same hardware, which will be a bolt, a split lock washer, and finally a flat washer. So what we're going to do when we're holding our running board against our brackets, we're actually going to thread our bolts from the inside into the running board, like that. Now with an extra set of hands, go ahead and pick our running board up. And get our hardware started and hand tight. We'll get at least one bolt in each mounting location, that way the running board will support itself while we work on the rest of them. Now since our running board is in place and we have all our hardware in hand tight, what we're going to do is just loosely tighten the bolts that hold our bracketry to the running board. Now you don't have to crank on it, 
more or less you just want to draw everything together. Now once again what we're going to do is loosely tighten all of our brackets that go to the truck. Now for the most rearward bracket, what we're going to do before we tighten the bracket to the frame is snug up our bushing bolts. And now we can tighten the factory bolts that hold our bracket to the truck. Now with all of our hardware somewhat tight and secure, we can check and see if we like the placement of our running boards. Here ours looks good. If you don't like your placement, what you can do is loosen your bolt where you want to make that adjustment and move it either way and re-secure it. But since we like ours, what we're going to do now is torque all of our hardware down. Now using a torque wrench, we can torque down all of our hardware. You can find the proper torque specification listed in your instructions. Now on the passenger side, it's going to be that exact same process to get them installed. And just like the driver's side, make sure that you check your instructions to make sure you're going to use the correct bracketry. Now I'd also like to point out in some applications, you may have to remove this DEF tank cover. If you do need to remove it, it's really simple. You'll just have four 10 millimeter bolts just like this. And that'll do it for our look at and installation of the Weston HDX Nerf Bars on our 2019 Chevrolet Silverado 3500.